You're going to have to pause, Roger. We're not sure if we have sound. Roger, just say something. Go ahead. Yes. Testing one, two, three. You might be having audio difficulties. Just say something. You yes. Can. One, two, three. Good morning, everyone. I don't know who has started yet. It's low. I don't know. No one touched your food. Did Could it be my microphone? No, it's no because. On. No, because Catherine's mic was also kind of low. Okay, let me try my mic, see how that is yeah. working. Okay, so sorry folks, it looks like our sound is low. We're gonna continue with the mask because the sound is coming through and um, hopefully we can get some good sound as the mask goes on. So um, we'll continue with the liturgy. It's, it's, it's coming through pretty good, but it's not as good as usual. Yeah. So we'll I can continue. Hear you good. Yeah. Apologize for those technical difficulties. Let me begin once again. I just want to welcome all of you to this live stream mass in St. Mary Parish. My name is Father Roger Bandacker. I'm the General Superior of the Companions of the Cross. It is a great joy for me to be here on this day, May the 1st, because this is the foundation anniversary of our community. Today is the 35th anniversary of the foundation of the Companions of the Cross in 
Acts of the Apostles. Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now, as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless because they heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. For three days he was without sight and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment he is praying, and he has seen a vision. A man named Ananias came in and, and laid his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he, he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, for he is an instrument who I have, have chosen to bring my name before the Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hand on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on your way here, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days, Saul was with the disciples in Damascus. And immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying, Jesus is the Son of God. The Word of the Lord.
Jews disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. She said these things while she was teaching in the synagogue of Capernaum. The Gospel of the Lord. So, my dear brothers and sisters, in the first reading today, we have that incredibly dramatic account of the conversion of St. Paul, whose original name was Saul. He who was a very devout Jew, Pharisee, but did not know the Lord, and was therefore persecuting these Christians as heretical Jews. Yet, as he traveled to Damascus in, in order to even arrest more, more of these followers of Jesus, he himself encountered the risen Lord through a blinding light from heaven. He fell to the ground and he heard the words of Jesus, Saul, Saul, why? Why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus. You are persecuting me. At that moment, Saul was cut to the heart, and yet he remained blinded by this experience until he came to Damascus, as instructed by the Lord, and came to Ananias, who laid his hands upon him, and then the scales fell from his eyes. He regained his sight, and he was filled with the Holy Spirit, and became one of the greatest apostles ever in the history of the church. All because he had an encounter with Jesus and was filled with the Holy Spirit. The reason I emphasize this aspect is because this is at the heart of our community, the Companions of the Cross, who we celebrate the foundation of our community 35 years ago on the first Friday of May in 1985. We were just a small group of seminarians meeting with Father Bob Bedard, who was pastor here at St. Mary's, meeting as a support group, a share group. But over the course of the previous several months, and finally culminating on this day, the sense of a call and the vision to actually become a new community came about. From that moment on, even though we didn't fully grasp all the ramifications, we began to really call ourselves brothers in the Lord, and to see ourselves as a real community, a real fraternity. And the primary sense we had was that God had this burning desire to renew his church in our day, that the church already 35 years ago was, was really struggling on the ropes, as it were. There seemed to be such lack of faith and such a falling away of faith and so much worldliness that was, was encroaching upon the life of the church and of the faith of the people. And we, as a small group, had each of us encountered the Lord Jesus Christ, had had powerful experiences of encounter and deeper conversion and especially through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, this particular grace that Scripture itself called being baptized 
with the Holy Spirit, being immersed in a way that you could almost feel it, you could feel it, you tangibly knew that you were being completely immersed in God's Spirit. And this is how we encounter Jesus. It's only through the Holy Spirit. And it's very possible for us to live many lives, to, uh, to live long lives, of faith, of actual convicted faith, a strong belief in God, but to have never encountered the Lord directly and personally, which is so key to our faith then becoming all pervasive in our lives and giving us a passion and a zeal to want to share that with others and to want to seek real holiness and a real deep relationship to the Lord. Instead of just being satisfied with kind of a, a minimal uh, practice of our faith. This is what we had experienced as a, as a young community. And this became then the vision of our community is to proclaim and to evangelize. So that others would know that Jesus was not just someone they had to believe in. But someone they could know and love personally and directly through the gift of the Holy Spirit, through being baptized with the Holy Spirit. And so, brothers and sisters, this is at the heart of our community, is this passion. And I can testify 35 years later, and having been ordained a priest now over 30, almost 31 years, that this is the passion of my heart the passion I know of my brother priests and seminarians. And I know many of you, of course, as supporters, and lay associates, and, and parishioners in our various parishes, and, and uh, benefactors also share this vision to be part of this movement of grace in the church today. There's a profound movement of grace. God is on the move to restore and to renew his church in the power of the Spirit. And we must keep that in mind because it's so easy to get discouraged. And, and even over the last 35 years, sometimes I wonder, has the church been renewed the way I hoped for 35 years ago? And, and in some ways I've seen obvious and definite signs of his grace but there's still so much more that the Lord needs to do. But our call, brothers and sisters, is to persevere with faith and confidence that God, who has called us to this ministry, wants to complete it, but he completes it sovereignly through the grace of his Spirit, but also as we surrender and cooperate and trust in that grace. It's so important that each one of us continues to surrender our hearts to the Lord, continues to allow His Spirit to more deeply change us and transform us by His grace and by His mercy. And finally, brothers and sisters, I just want to share with you about a growing realization that if we want to see Jesus lifted high, if we want to see the world come to know and experience Jesus, we know, as Scripture tells us, we know we need the Holy Spirit. It was really only after Pentecost that even the apostles and disciples who knew Jesus were finally transformed and empowered and set free from their limitations and fears to proclaim him to the world. So we know that the, the, the grace of Pentecost is a grace that we all need. And what the church needs today, if we want to see renewal in the church, is it needs a new Pentecost. This has always been part of our vision, is to, to pray for this grace and help to cultivate this, this grace of Pentecost in the hearts and lives of our people wherever we minister. But the newest insight that I have to add to that is the role of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Today we begin the, the beautiful month of May, May 1st. We'll be consecrating our country and our parish, parishes and our families and loved ones to the Blessed Mother today in a special way with all the bishops 
gathered through Canada and the United States as well. And the role of Mary in this grace is so key. She's not just a sideline. I believe she's integral. Think about it. How did Jesus first come into the world? It was when the Holy Spirit and Mary came together. When Mary said yes to God's will, the Holy Spirit descended upon her, and it was through the Holy Spirit that she conceived in her womb, the incarnate Son of God, Jesus the Christ, and then nurtured and gave birth to him. And so, too, Mary continues to be the mediatrix of these graces that we so need of, the grace of conversion, the grace of holiness, the grace of transformation, the grace of Pentecost. It is through Mary, and think about it, Mary was right there in the upper room as well with the apostles. And so too, I believe that as we as a church and individually, as we come into a deeper awareness and therefore a deeper spiritual communion with Mary, we will allow the Holy Spirit to conceive within us the Lord Jesus. And then we, like Mary, in a, you know, in a similar but in a different way, obviously, we can spiritually conceive and give birth to Jesus in our world. And so what the church needs today is, yes, we need the Holy Spirit, but the way we're going to get the Holy Spirit is also through a deeper devotion to Mary, a true devotion to Mary that understands how key she is in obtaining for us this grace. And we as companions of the cross have always had that awareness, perhaps it's deepening in our own lives, but that sense that Mary was one of the pillars of our spirituality, along with the Holy Spirit, the magisterium of the church, and of course, the Eucharistic Lord Jesus himself. But these four pillars are key to our life and our spirituality, and we want to be ministers of that to the church and to so I encourage all of you, especially in this Mass today, the beginning of May, and it's interesting, here we are, the beginning of May, the month of Mary, and what's the final day of May this year is the Feast of Pentecost. I don't think that that's, that's, that's just by coincidence. We begin with Mary so that we can conclude with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So let us then all unite our hearts Again, I thank you for joining us, especially all of the supporters and friends and lay associates and, and benefactors of our community over many years, many of you. Thank you for your love and prayers. And we continue then to pray for you and to offer this Mass also in a special way for all your needs. So now we are going to unite with our bishops across Canada and the United States in this consecration of our country and of our parishes to Blessed Mary, Mother of the Church. And this, these are the official prayers that the Conference of Bishops have given to us. And here is the introduction. Brothers and sisters, in this time of global pandemic marked by desolation and with worry about the future, let us entrust our country and parishes to the care and protection of the Blessed Virgin Mary, that we may benefit from her powerful intercession as we join our prayers and efforts with her maternal mediation in Christ by imploring the incomparable help of Mary, Mother of God, our mother, we invoke her solicitude upon our country and ask that she intercede with her son Jesus. Hear the prayers of her children who seek protection from the ravages of the coronavirus, healing to those who are ill, wisdom and courage to those who assist the sick and distressed, and eternal rest for those who have died. During this month of 
May, which the Church particularly dedicates to the Mother of Christ, we are one in consecrating ourselves and our loved ones to Mary Most Holy, humble handmaid of the Lord and his most perfect disciple. We lift up in prayer and in recognition all those many women and men, clergy, religious, and laity, who tirelessly commit themselves to the care of others. The innumerable acts of deep human kindness, as well as, enough, as authentic Christian charity, which we witness across the globe, are a source of great consolation for all. We are reminded evermore of the need to believe and hope against all hope. And we are called to reach out to the needy, the lonely, and the dying, and so welcome the graces of divine consolation. And so now we pray this prayer of consecration united to all our bishops. Most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church, in this time of pandemic, we turn our gaze to you, and in Christ consecrate to you the faithful of St. Mary's Parish, together with all the people of Canada. At the Annunciation, fear gave way to trust, as you embrace the mysterious and loving plan of God, who through his providence, care and concern, brought about newness of life in you and through you. Intercede, we pray, on our behalf as your children, virgin most faithful. Grant us faith, hope, and perseverance as we strive to serve and bear witness to all persons responding to the needs of those affected by this virus. Standing at the foot of the cross at Calvary, you united yourself with the sufferings of Christ and so uniquely contributed to the mystery of our redemption. We beseech you as help of the sick. Draw to yourself in maternal compassion the brothers and sisters of your son Jesus and all those who are grieved by this pandemic. Strengthen the dying and comfort those who weep so that all may experience the healing grace of Christ, our divine physician. At the cenacle, after the resurrection, you accompany the apostles with prayer for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. In your maternal care as consoler of the afflicted, accompany healthcare profession, professionals, all who minister to the sick, and all those who seek a cure to end this pandemic, that the Holy Spirit may renew face of the earth. To all of us, dearest Mother, Mary, Mother of all the living, be present and show your tenderness as we raise our eyes to you who shine forth before the entire community as a merciful, compassionate companion on our journey. Time and time again, with burdens weighing heavily on our hearts and in their many necessities, the Christian faith was sought refuge under your mantle of protection. Come quickly to our aid at this time, Mother of Mercy, and deliver us from the dangers that surround us in our hour of need. Watch over especially the elderly, the weak, and the infirm, our children, and the unity of our families, and all those who give themselves selflessly in pastoral care to those in need, until in your arms and in your gentle embrace we all find safety and solace. Amen. Now, united as the body in Christ, let us direct our prayer to our all-loving God, who wants us to honor Mary, her mother. With her, we too praise the Lord's mighty deeds as he continues to lift up the lowly, remembering his promise of mercy. And the response to these intercessions is, Look upon Mary and hear our prayer. Look upon Mary and hear our prayer. May the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church, who experienced the cares and hardships of earthly life, the weariness of daily toil, the trials of poverty and sorrows of Calvary, come to assist the needs of the Church, the initial budding forth of your kingdom on earth and all humankind. Look upon us, Mary, and hear our prayer. The Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church, lend a gracious ear to the devout pleas of those who from
from across the world implore her goodness for health, safety, and peace, especially for our parishes, our domestic churches, and all our communities of faith. Look upon us, Mary, and hear our prayer. May the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church, obtain the gifts of knowledge and wisdom for government, officials, and medical professionals that a cure for the virus may be found and for all who care for the sick, the suffering, and the dying. May she obtain from the Lord courage and benevolence. Benevolence. Look upon us, Mary, and hear our prayer. May the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church, pray on our behalf and with us to the Lord of life and love, who rules the winds and storms to calm the tempests in our minds and hearts and grant us consolation, security, and peace in our day. Look upon us, Mary, and hear our prayer. For the special intention of this Mass, for the Companions of the Cross as they celebrate the 35th anniversary of their foundation, we pray, look upon us, Mary, and hear our prayer. Father in heaven, hear these prayers and intentions which we have offered to you today especially through the powerful intercession of our Blessed Mother Mary. We offer them always through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, may the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice of your generous, for the grace and glory of his name, for our judgment of all his worship. O oh God, fount of all mercy, look upon our offerings, which we bring before your majesty in commemoration of Saint Joseph, and mercifully grant that the gifts we offer may become the means of protection for those who call upon you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, and on the commemoration of St. Joseph, 
to give you fitting praise, to glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given by you as spouse to the Virgin Mother of God, and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household to watch like a father over your only begotten son, who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. To him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we obtain holy, holy, holy Lord God of you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore o lord we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven and as we look forward to his second coming we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice look we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, 
one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Terence, our Bishop, Guy, his auxiliary, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. To him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the in unity the of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be clean.
prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you, never permitting to be separated from you. Let us pray. Having fed upon heavenly delights, we humbly ask you, O Lord, that by St. Joseph's example, cherishing in our hearts the signs of your love, we may ever enjoy the fruit of perpetual peace through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in this day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander now throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls.